Hello students, we are going to discuss a very important component today which is called categorization of information sources. Now in this topic we will see that there are different kinds of sources which are available from where the information is going to be useful for all the different kind of stakeholders. We are going to cover the following components, what are the information sources? the types of information sources like documentary sources of information, non-documentary sources of information, history of the development of information sources like development of printed books and other sources, emergence of periodicals, emergence of electronic sources, emergence of mass media, emergence of internet and world wide web that is triple w. So what are information sources? A library organizes this collection for the better use of its material by the users. So information sources are also organized according to their contents, type, media or form because there are different kinds of forms are available to cater the different needs of the users. Information sources are of two broad types. Now one of them is called documentary sources and the another one is called non-documentary sources. Now see this is a very classical classification of sources in one gist you can get it. The information sources are divided into two parts, documentary sources and non-documentary sources. When we talk about documentary sources, it is divided further into content and form. Content is further divided into primary, secondary and tertiary, which are going to be dealt in details. Form, paper based and other media and non-documentary sources, internet, mass media, organization and human. Now documentary sources of information like primary sources, primary sources are those sources which contain original material that has been published, reported or recorded for the first time and has not been interpreted, commented upon, summarized, translated or evaluated by a secondary party. Now primary periodicals, if we divide the primary periodicals, many of these primary periodicals you come across every day in your life like for example newspapers, technical reports, dissertations, conference papers, patents, standards, trade and product bulletins. Now let us take the first primary periodical that is the journal which is useful for the students, researchers and teachers. A primary periodical is a periodical which is a publication published by definite periodicity. It could be weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly etc under the same title and intend to publish indefinitely. Each issue is dated and consecutively numbered. Primary periodicals mostly publish research articles that is the primary research articles. Primary periodicals are published by learned societies, universities, government organizations and private or commercial publishers. This is a typical example of an Indian journal of biotechnology, a subject specific primary journal. It could be on general also. There are several examples in your book which is where the general examples are all given but this is a subject specific primary journal. This is a subject specific once again a primary journal on library and information science published by Desidoc. There are national and international newspapers. There are technical reports, there are different kinds of reports, reports on very specific areas, specific subject areas like for example this is a typical technical report on sports. So different kind of infrastructure, different kind of you know the working profile, the different kinds of people, the governance, the, there are different kind of uh, the work structures, everything is covered a kind of a report which is on sports. This is a other examples of technical reports like this another technical report writing today which is on a series basis a publishing industry brings it out and there are some learned organization also brings out very interesting technical reports like there is a technical report too this is on sustainable landscape on a very subject specific area this technical report on a detailed scientific research oriented report has been compiled based on this. The most important thing another primary periodical is conference papers. 
Now, these conference papers are the deliberations which are dictated in the different kind of conferences, workshops, seminars and generally it is deliberated by the subject experts. And these conference papers are compiled and when they are compiled, they brought out in the form of a book. Now, why we use these conference papers? First time a research breakthrough is made in the public or a current issue are debated. Papers are presented at a conference long before it ever they are published in professional peer reviewed journals. Conferences often provides a forum for discussions between attendees. The papers in different both current and style from articles published in different kinds of journals. So, here the primary thought process which are compiled together and brought out in the form of a typical conference papers compiled volume, it could be an edited volume or it could be a conference proceeding also. The most important thing is thesis and dissertations. Now, for example, today you learners, suppose you are tomorrow you are going for any masters program or in a PhD program or any other advanced program and all, you have to do collect a lot of primary and secondary data and you have to come up with a very interesting report on your findings. Now, these findings are put together in the form of a thesis and a dissertations and a very able researcher brings out the best of his contribution in the form of a thesis or a dissertations. In any academic parlance, the thesis and dissertation is, is very important for the students to submit because his thoughts, his skills and his total experience during his academic study is very important to come up. There is a way of writing a dissertation. First of all, you have to research a topic or a proposition or what we call as a proposal writing. You conceptualize it, you research on that from different secondary sources, analysis of the findings and then dissemination of those findings and then logical interpretation and you put together and you conclude it in the form of a thesis or a dissertations. So, this is a complete cycle how a dissertation writing is taken place. A dissertation thesis is looks something like this that it has got the you know the logo, the name of the supervisor because you have to do the thesis or the dissertations based on you know taking a guidance from one of your expert. So, it is you know title, your year, your you know logo of the institutions and all and it is in a leather bound with gold plated something like this. There are some standards are followed by different universities, even in IGNO also there is a standard. So, this kind of thesis and dissertations are produced. Then the most important thing is patent. Now, there are two examples of this patent, just see in this. This is one patent from the United States of America and the another patent is from India. Now, what is exactly a patent? The patent is basically the intellectual property right of an organization, of an institution. Now, these are filed in the patent office that this is my only contribution and the first of its kind in the history. So, basically somebody brings in in the market uh, this kind of a patent and the patent office provides this kind of a documentation and certifies that this particular person has done the patented work. Then comes your very important standards. I will take an example of a curriculum like the curriculum developed by IGNO itself. It is of high standard. Now, why it is? Because you have to maintain a standard of an international stature because in this curriculum. Now, why a standard is maintained? Because there are several attributes to it like it has a mission and a vision. It supports learners like you. It has to enhance the academic quality. The teachers are there, the uh, students, they have their curriculum assessments and the different, different kinds of premises where basically this kind like for example, the recording which is taking place, it is of high standard. So, these kind of standards are always followed which is very important. This is a company called Gracewell in UK who have brought out a large number of furnitures related to the library 
or based on certain international standards. Like these are the standards, you can see some of the examples, like how your reading table, the sitting chair, how it is going to be ergonomically, the different measurements would be there. How, what is the measurement of your shelves or different racks? So each and every standard is specified in each and of this kind of a diagrammatic structure. This is a very interesting website. All the students are requested to please visit to this. This is called Bureau of Indian Standards. This is a renowned body of government of India where different standards for different things have been laid out. So you can visit to that. This is an international standard organization called ISO because like for example, they were like for quality parameter, you need to have a ISO 9000 certification for it. So different kind of popular standards, you can also look into it when you visit to this particular website. There are secondary sources also. The secondary sources of information are mostly depend on primary sources of information for their existence. They usually present the contents of primary documents in condensed form or list them in a helpful way so that the existence of the primary documents are known and access to them is made easy. These are some of the four categories of secondary sources. The category 1, index type, category 2, survey type, category 3, reference books, category 4, technical translations. Paper based documentary sources. Sources include published as well as unpublished sources. Published sources are those which are printed in large number of copies by publishers. Unpublished sources are not printed. Documentary sources could be many things like sound or audio recordings, visual images, then artifacts and realia, electronic media, optical media, microform. These are different kinds of documentary sources in other than other medias. Like this is an audio tape and different kinds of tapes are there. There is a microfilm reader. There is, it, it used to be very popular in different libraries where the microfilm reader was like this. Then there are microfilm spool because it is a film in which each and every document or a newspaper photographed and pasted on it and then it runs into the microfilm reader. This is a microfish machine where each and every pages are cut into small, small pieces and it could be seen with the help of a microfilm reader. And this is a typical microfilm and a microfish storage center where it is kept, categorized in a different way based on the different kinds of resources. This is a very new thing, audio books, where on a very subject specific areas, starting from the children to the different levels of people, the audio books are created on contemporary areas so that the students not only visually they can see but also they can read out the thing. Like for example, what you are doing right now in this particular platform. Non-documentary sources like humans. Humans serve as useful sources of information for such information which has not been recorded in any form. It is basically a tacit knowledge. Human ranging from experts to common man act as important sources of information depending upon the nature of information that is required. Now, non-documentary sources, it could be organizations, the organizations where you are working. Organizations are also important sources of information. Organizations, it could be library information center, academic institutions, R&D institutions, museums, archives, publishing houses, government establishment, these are non-documentary sources. Mass media, the medium by which news and information are spread to the public, to the entire mass. The mass media, it could include press, newspapers, magazine, radio, televisions, there are seven kind of media into that. The advantages like television with the light, sound, action, it can brings the user to the home. It is extremely interactive, but it is one way track. Radio, where a large number of people, not only in urban areas, but in the rural areas also, they can also listen to the thoughts the academic different kinds of academic things like there is a very interesting you know programs given by the IGNO. So anywhere, anytime one can easily travel and listen to all those important the deliberations of the people. Cyber media, internet, media published on the internet or cyberspace is called basically the cyber media. This is an interactive digital media like internet and is different from the traditional media such as print and television. Here because it is interactive also, the media allows individuals to interact, exchange ideas, share information, 
provide social support, conduct business, create artistic media, play games and engage in discussions. Internet allows millions of people to connect together each other and communicate and share those informations with each other. So this is in a kind of a capsule formation on the categorization of information sources where actual you will have seen the different kinds of sources are categorized into different printed form, electronic form and all.